This is Sal here, and I'm with uh, Kim Cutts, who's Khan Academy's American History Content Fellow. And uh, what I'm curious about is, you, you know, in, our, in, our, in, in school you learn about the Civil War, you learn about slavery, uh, that slavery was a, a cause of the Civil War, but I, at least for myself, I never got a full context of, you know, what were all the dynamics that led to the Civil War? Is it just something that happened overnight? Oh, definitely not. You know, I think the seeds of the Civil War were really with the United States at its creation. You know, I think there's a, sort of an essential contradiction in the United States as it's born. You know, we're this country where all men are created equal, except that most of the states in the South have slavery where people are clearly not created equal. So, you know, they couldn't win the Revolutionary War without including those states and kind of giving them what they wanted in retaining slavery. But it means that, you know, the U.S. is born with both free states and slave states, and they're going to continue to try to figure out how to balance those for the rest of the 1800s. And we have this map here, and this map is a, a later period, but it shows the, this is actually closer to the Civil War. But if we even look at the original 13 colonies, you can see which ones were free states and which ones were, which ones were slave states. And then you obviously have these other states that come in later, which we'll, which we'll talk about. But this, what you're saying is, it, at the founding of the country, this was already an issue. People were, you know, there were people in the North who weren't fans of slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and people knew that at some point this would be an ir irreconcilable, or maybe they hoped there would be a reconcilable uh, a difference. But they said, no, we got to unify against Great Britain. Exactly. And so they said, let's just become a country and do it. You know, even Thomas Jefferson, uh, the author of the Declaration of Independence, he knew that slavery was a contradiction. He called the issue of having slavery like holding a wolf by the ears, right? You can't hold on to it, but you can't let it go because so many of the wealthy elites who are going to end up in Congress in the South are slave owners. So including, they want to- Including himself. Exactly. So they want to protect their interests. So we have that, that it's, you know, the, the issue is there from, from the, the moment that the country is founded. And then we get into the 1800s, which is really the run up. You know, the Civil War doesn't start until, you know, we get into 1860 or, or, or shortly thereafter. What, or actually 1860. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is, you know, what are, what are the, what's the, what's the big picture that really leads up to it? Well, I think what we're looking at when we get into the issues that lead to the Civil War is really about how the U.S. handles getting new territory, right? And the U.S. was getting a lot of new territory. We have a map here. I guess the, the first really big chunk is you have the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. Mm -hmm. And so you get all of, let's see, let me shade it in. You get, you know, roughly all of this stuff right over here. So that's new areas that... It, that Settlers can go and right. and and, uh, and it becomes officially part of the U.S. And what else happens? So you know, as we get these new territories out of them, you're going to get new states. Mm -hmm. And when new states come into the union, they are going to come in as either free states or slave states. So you know, we've balanced the interests of the North and South up until this point, right, from the Revolutionary War, so that there's equal representation in Congress between free states and slave states. Well, why does, why does someone care? If I'm, you know, if I'm someone in Massachusetts, why do I care whether the new state of Missouri is going to be a free state or a slave state? Well, I think there, there are two reasons why you might care. Um, first, you know, if you're an abolitionist, and these are the people who we know very well, like Frederick Douglass or William Lloyd Garrison, who was the editor of the newspaper The Liberator, these are the people who feel that, correctly, slavery is morally wrong. You know, slavery is a corruption of the essential principles on which the country was founded. Um, it's something that you know destroys lives, destroys families. But another reason, if you're, say, in Massachusetts or Pennsylvania, why you might care whether a new state is a slave state is you're worried about opportunities for yourself out in the West. You know, we know that Horace Greeley, this famous newspaper editor, he says, now, what do you do if you're a young man in New York, a young white man who doesn't know how to get ahead? He says, go West, young man. You know, you can go out there, you can get some land, you can start a farm. But if you go out there and you find that all of the land has been bought up by rich slaveholders from the South, you might not be able to get any land, and you certainly might not be able to, for example, sell your corn 
at a rate low enough that you could beat somebody who has free labor. So there was a, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of focus on the moral argument, which is a very strong argument. Right. But there's also this, this interesting economic argument, which you, which you just talked about, which is it's hard to compete with slavery. I mean, you're literally talking about labor that does not need traditional wages. Right. That is literally slave labor. And so if you are having your own farm and you, aren't, you, you don't own slaves, how are you going to compete with that? And so that was the reason why some folks in the North on economic arguments. Now, would these people be considered abolitionists? No, the way that we think about those, um, we call them anti-slavery. So anti-slavery advocates, they, they don't think that they can get rid of slavery in the South, even if they don't like slavery in the South. They don't even see how it would be possible to get rid of it. But they do think that as these new states are coming into the Union, they could prevent them from becoming slave states so that it's possible for the Western lands to remain free. Um, you know, Abraham Lincoln, I think, is a, a really good poster child for this. You know, we'll, I think we'll talk about him a little bit more later. But Lincoln is born in Kentucky, one of these new Western states. His father is a small white farmer. And slave owners move into Kentucky, later you know, becomes a slave, a slave state, and his father can't find work. His father can't find land. So he ends up first having to move to Indiana, then moving to Illinois. And so this is literally a case of one of these poor white farmers who just can't compete with slavery, which is one reason why Lincoln himself is later going to come out so strongly in favor of making sure there's no slavery in the West. So abolitionists want to, slavery is 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 amoral it needs to be removed from definitely the united states possibly the world yeah, absolutely anti-slavery they also think slavery is bad they don't like it right uh they, they think it's well but i'm not going to fight that fight to remove it that, maybe that's hard to do or impossible right. but it shouldn't spread it's not fair it, it's the reason my dad wasn't able to to ha be able to run his farm absolutely and so when we get it so that's the, you know you have the louisiana purchase and you know, in other videos we talk that's famously you know, napoleon sold it for quite cheap because the fact that he couldn't defend it because he was fighting these <laughs> wars and he's fighting these wars in Europe. That's the big, that's the first chunk of land. So you have all of these states and they, they need to figure out whether they're, they're slave, slave states or free states. But why would, I mean, I talked about why would a northerner care whether a slave or a free state? Why would a southerner care? Why would, if I'm a, if I'm a slave owner, I own a plantation in South Carolina or Georgia, why do I care if Missouri is a slave state or a free state? Well, I think, you know, just as their political interests are tied up in slavery, all of their money is tied up in slavery. You know, in 1860, the most valuable thing that anyone owns in the United States is slaves, mm -hmm. right? You can't, you can't compete with that kind of money. So they wanna make sure that if a new state comes into the union, that state isn't a free state because then the free states might have more representation in Congress mm. and then they can vote to outlaw slavery. So if your whole fortune is built on slavery, if you're a white slave owner, um, they outlaw that, then you're left with nothing. I see. So in the North, there's the moral argument, there's the economic argument, slavery, slavery is hard to compete with. And the South, hey, if, if we have too many of these free states, at some point they're going to have a majority, you know, enough of a voting power in the government to, uh, to, to, to maybe out, uh, abolish slavery one day, which would completely undermine, if I'm a slave owner, my, you know, my, my, my economics of, of my reality. Right. I mean, and they are sort of essentially amoral. Even, you know, someone like Jefferson, who knows that slavery is wrong, his whole wealth, his whole fortune, his whole political dynasty is built on the fortune of owning slaves. And, and you know, one of the, the, the first points where this, you know, this really gets balanced, this issue is, you know, we have the Louisiana Purchase in, in 1803, then starting to carve out the Louisiana Purchase, you have states like Missouri, they get to their critical mass of, of people, of population, mm -hmm. so that they can become a state. And so what was the Missouri Compromise all about in 1820? So the Missouri Compromise is when, you know, we have enough people living in Missouri, you know, these are white people generally coming, who have come from the eastern states, and they apply for statehood. You've got an equal number of slave states and free states already in Congress. So if Missouri comes in and they want to be a slave state, they're going to upset the apple cart. They're going to upset the balance. So there will be more representatives for the South than there will be for North. And everything they've done so far has been predicated on this sort of tenuous balance between free states and uh, slave states. So 
you know, they debate this in Congress just for months. And eventually what they do is say, all right, well, we can't decide. So what we're going to do is admit the state of Maine at the same time. Okay. And admit, I mean, Maine, the territory of Maine was already part of the United States. What I mean, how is it not already a, a state? Uh, it was part of Massachusetts. But as you can see, you know, it's really only tenuously connected to Massachusetts. So they divide this territory up so that it can have its own representation in Congress. So they say, all right, well, we can't solve this problem of the balance of power between free states and slave states right now. So what we're going to do is just kind of extend our balance. We're going to keep this compromise going to make sure that there are the same number of free and slave states. So we'll let Missouri in as a slave state at the same time we let Maine in as a free state. Fascinating. So I think, and, and, I mean, I, I see where this is going, that you have these very tenuous compromises while more and more territory is being added. Uh, it's exciting to see where, where all of this goes.